Hello you guys, welcome to today's makeup declutter video. Today we are tackling blushes and bronzers and that is all. I have such a big blush collection. I have over 200 blushes. It was the year of the blush anyway and I went a little crazy buying new blushes and I have a really hard time letting blushes go but I'm going to do my best. I have done a video where I'm decluttering my primers, my concealers, my powders, and my mascara. So if you guys are interested in that, please do check out my channel. I also do have other declutters on my channel. If you guys are into declutters, you can go check out my declutter playlist and I will be doing face palettes and highlighters together and then a full eyeshadow declutter maybe by the end of this year, potentially the very beginning of next year. But without further ado, let's get into the declutter. Okay, this is all my powder blushes. I have recently done a video on my channel where I am like literally swatching every one of these blushes. So I don't think I'm gonna be swatching everything, but I definitely am gonna be swatching the ones that I'm kind of unsure about just to get an idea. I need to pare this down because there are so many in here I do not reach for. So I'm gonna set this container or these containers aside and start pulling them out probably like by brand. So the first two that I have are the Pure Nude Bake Blushes from Essence. I quite like these for something more shimmery and then of course something more like a lighter buildable formula. I think these are really nice. I don't reach for them that much, but something that I probably wanna start reaching for as I start to pare down my collection. So I'm gonna hold on to these two. Then I have two from House Labs here and I wanna keep both of these. I honestly love this formula, love these shades. This one is my favorite, which I think shocked me because I'm usually not into these kind of tones, but I think that this is like super beautiful on me. Like not too bright, it's just the kind of pink that I like, it's a little bit more warm. So I'm gonna hold on to both of these, really enjoy this formula. I have two of the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Blushes. I recently picked this one up because I wanted to try a different shade, but like of the five shades that they have, they're all pretty like vibrant and maybe even a little bit deep. I thought maybe I could get like a mauve shade, but the Fearless Coral one right here is my favorite. This one just doesn't look terribly good on my skin tone. So I'm gonna keep the Fearless Coral one and then get rid of this one, which is in the shade Daring Rosewood. It's just a little bit too deep for me. And then I have one blush from Kaleidos. This is just honestly something I'm not gonna reach for. This is one of their mono blushes in Angel Wing. And I hate to say it, but it's just, it's too light on me. It doesn't show up. So I'm pretty darn fair. I don't know who this would show up for. I feel like if I want something like this, I have something somewhere else. I don't see myself reaching for this. Honestly, I'm just trying to think of like what I might end up panning or just getting a ton of enjoyment out of. So I'm gonna declare that one. I have one here from Catkin. I do really like this. Like it's nice and pigmented. It is a very shimmery blush, but the shade on me sometimes casts a little gray. This one I've gone back and forth on as to whether or not I'm gonna hold on to it. And I also did wanna mention, I am doing a chopping block video at the end of my declutters because there are some things that I haven't reached for in a while that I really do wanna make sure I don't like before I just get rid of them. So some of these may go into a chopping block. I think this one's gonna go into the chopping block for right now, but I'm gonna hold on to it to see if this is a shade that I end up liking. Again, it's something that has sometimes turned like just a little bit gray on me. So chopping block, that one. I have one blush from Lancome. I am not getting rid of this. This is such a beautiful, like almost hot pink shade that is shimmery. It's not shimmery in that it has like sparkles, but it has like gold pigment in it. I love this holding onto this one. I have one here from ZC. This is the Peony blush from the Palace Identity Collection. I have gone back and forth again with this one because of the packaging, but this color is just too much for me and it doesn't diffuse out. And I just don't think I'm into a product that really doesn't diffuse well, it's just super pigmented like I used to be. It's really hard to blend in because it's maybe a tackier formula. I, I am gonna let this one go. It's not a bad formula. It's just really, really pigmented in B01, I think is the shade on this. I'm gonna declutter this one. I have one Glam Light blush from the Chucky collection. I held onto this for a couple of reasons. I was one of the few that actually did get two different shades. Most people ended up getting like the same shade and I'm not sure why, but I held onto it because of that reason. I just don't think these are shades that I reach for. And honestly, it's kind of just taking up space in the drawer. 
Like I like the fact that I ended up getting two different shades. I just don't see myself reaching for either of these shades. And if I wanted this shade, I would grab the L'Oreal one in Fearless Coral that's fairly similar to this. So I'm going to declutter this. I have three blushes here from Kiko Milano. This one I just recently picked up in their advent calendar. It's in the shade 06, I think, which is part of their like unlimited collection. I haven't even used this yet. It's just a mauve shade. So I'm gonna hold on to this. This one here is a duo. I just quite love their formula. Again, a mauve shade, but this is a softer formula than the one I just showed you. Plus it has this beautiful highlighter that I love. So I am gonna hold on to that one. This one I'm gonna let go. This is their gingerbread blush from, what was this? The Joyful Holiday Collection Enchanted Duo Blush. This was from last year's holiday collection. It's just, I think too deep for me. It's a pretty unique shade in my collection. I just honestly, again, I think it's a little bit too deep and a little bit too difficult to blend out. So as much as I love their formula, this is just not a shade that I want to hold on to. So I'm going to declutter this as well. I have one blush here from Catrice. This is a beautiful, amazing baked formula. It is again, kind of like that L'Oreal one where it has, not L'Oreal, the Lancome one that has the kind of gold throughout and it's like this hot pink shade. This is really unique and again, kind of special. So holding on to this one. I have one Charlotte Tilbury blush. This is the Chic to Chic in Pillow Talk. I have not reached for this in so long, but it used to be a blush that I reached for all the time. One of the things that this does on me just in this particular shade is cast a little bit gray on my cheeks. So this again is one that I wanna put into the chopping block. I love the formula, I love the sheen on it, but again, wanna make sure this doesn't look unflattering on me. And since I haven't reached for it in so long, I really do need to test it. So this one is going into a chopping block with the Catkin one. I have two of the M Cosmetics blushes, the Heaven's Glow blushes, Fade in Clementine and then Venetian Rose. I love these, love these hands down. Some of my like favorite shimmery, pigmented, super soft powder blushes. They're amazing and they are going nowhere. I honestly need to get more use out of those. I have two Amazonian Clay Cheek Wardrobe blushes from Tarte. These are trios. I got these in a holiday collection and they have survived so many of my declutters because I've traveled with these so many times. They come with like two matte and then one shimmery blush. Although I use this one as a highlighter. I don't know why this shade seems to work on me, but it does. I just haven't been able to part with these, but I literally never reach for them. It also comes with a third one, which comes with a blush, highlighter, and a bronzer, and I've traveled with that one quite a bit. So I am gonna let these go. It's just time. I never reach for them. I need to give love to the ones that I do have. So I'm gonna hold on to the other one, which I think I have in my bronzer drawer, but I'm going to let the both of these go, finally. This one actually it kind of pains me. I've had these for many years, and have really enjoyed them. They're like one of the first things that I kind of like treated myself to when I was starting to build my collection, but it's just time. I'm gonna let these go. I have one blush from Laura Geller. I have to say her powder blushes, um, some of my favorite. Like this is an amazing shimmery formula. This is in the shade Down to Earth. It is pigmented and beautiful. Like look at that and that beautiful, like almost silvery sheen. This is gorgeous, I highly recommend this. I have one Benefit Box Blush in Butterfly. This is a pretty vibrant orange shade. Do I want this? And it has like gold sparkles in it too. I think I'm gonna hold on to this one because the only one that I have that's fairly similar, I think is this one from M Cosmetics. How similar are they? Oh my gosh, they're literally almost identical. Yeah, I don't need both. Like I would much prefer to reach for this formula and this packaging um, than this one. Like this is good, but the sheen isn't even as refined in this. I think I'm actually gonna let this go. I'm going to declutter that. I have one Givenchy loose powder blush in the shade three. This is fairly new to me. It's not an overly pigmented product. It's actually a more buildable formula, especially more so than I thought it was gonna be, but it is my only loose powder blush and it is fairly new, so I'm gonna hold on to it. I have one Laura Mercier color infusion blush. This is in the shade Chai. Really like this. This is probably my most neutral blush and 
because I got rid of the Kaleidos one that's very similarly shaded to this, I prefer this formula. So I'm going to hold on to this one because again, when I'm looking for something super neutral, like this is the blush that I think of because it's just lightly pigmented. If I'm doing a more vibrant eye look, I like to reach for this blush. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. I have three blushes from Bare Minerals. I have one of their highlighting blushes, their bronzers, and then the Gen Nude. I'm not getting rid of any of these. This one is in the shade Call Me Blush. These are all spectacular. I love Bare Minerals formula. This is like one of my favorite products of 2023 that launched. And I think that the bronzer is also spectacular. So I love all of these. I get a lot of use out of this one. I just think they do an amazing job. So these three will stay. I have one Make Beauty blush. This is in the shade Mystic Mauve. It's called their Skin Mimetic Micro Suede Blush. These make products, they tend to turn pretty quickly. This one already has like a smell to it that I didn't notice when I first got it. These are removable and I do like this packaging. I don't know what else would fit here, but if I do replace this blush, I would like to hold on to the packaging, but I am going to declutter this because I do not think it smells right. I haven't had it that long. I would say like a year and a half, maybe. But yeah, and, and plus it's not like a really unique shade. I, if I go for something mauve like this, honestly, the ones from Bare Minerals or the Kiko Milano blushes I would reach for before this one, it's not bad. This one almost has like a purplish kind of undertone for mauve. It's a little bit more purpley than say some of the other ones are, but I don't know why it smells. I'm, I'm just going to get rid of this one. I have one here from Give Beauty. It's the Feel and Cheeky Amplifying Blush Duo, Duo in Lasting Love. I think these are really pretty. I don't know if this is gonna become like one of my favorite blushes. I would rather get use out of a lot of the other ones that I showed you. But because this is fairly new in my collection, I'm gonna hold on to it for now. I have one here from Unique Beauty. This is an indie brand out of the UK. I have talked about this blush, kind of raving about it many times on my channel because it's just this really unique kind of vibrant shade and it's ultra pigmented. But honestly, it kind of reminds me of the one from ZC. It's a little bit more difficult to diffuse out. I would say this one is a little bit easier. This one is gonna go in the chopping block. I'm going back and forth in my mind on this one. And after swatching it, it is really beautiful and it blends a lot better than the one from ZC. So chopping block, this one, this will go with Charlotte and the Catkin one. I have two here from Too Faced from the Candy, no, the Cloud Crush. Blurring Blushes collection. This one is in Candy Clouds and this one is in Velvet Crush. These aren't my favorite formula and this one I've already technically decluttered. I do have a closet full of stuff that I keep for reference and because this shade was so trendy, I thought I might, I can't even open these, reference it at some point this year, but I haven't. Again, not my favorite formula, but I do think it's pretty darn good. I would so much prefer to reach for a shade like this than this. This, I just don't think looks good on my undertone, but this is a really beautiful one. I still think though, I'm going to fully declutter this. This is going to come out of reference. So it's going to leave my collection permanently. And this one is gonna go into a chopping block because I have a lot of shades that are very similar to this. And I have to decide whether or not this is a formula that I prefer kind of holding on to or reaching for more so than some of the other ones that are similar shades. So declutter, chopping block. I have one here from Profusion. This is their Social Butterfly Soft Cloud Blush in Painted Lady. I really do like this formula. I actually think this is a pretty good product from Profusion. And it's almost like a cream. This is kind of a putty formula, so it's not really powder, even though that's the drawer I put it in. I think it's a really good product. It was my favorite product from this collection that they launched, but I have so many other ones that I would rather reach for than this one, so I'm gonna declutter this. I have one from Giorgio Armani. It's the Luminous Silk Blush, Glow Blush in the shade 30, which is a coral shade. Honestly, I'm reaching for so many more mauves these days. I would love to pick up a more mauve shade, but this this goes nowhere. I absolutely love this formula. I love their Neo Nude Melting Bombs, and yeah, so I love this. I'm gonna hold on to that one. I have one little mini from NARS. I've held on to this one again through so many declutters. It's in Orgasm X, so it has like a little bit of sheen to it. This one reminds me a lot of the Catrice one, and I would rather reach for the Catrice one. It also reminds me of the Lancome one, so I am going to finally declutter this one. 
I have one here from Makeup Forever that launched this year. It's called their Artist Blush in Spirited Sienna. One of my most pigmented, like softest blushes. This one did come broken. Super unique shade in my collection though, and it's super blendable. I have to go in with a really light hand on this. This is going nowhere, I'm keeping that. One blush here from Gucci in the shade Rosy Beige. Love this one, have traveled with this one. Very similar, I wanna say, to the Pillow Talk from Charlotte. I just don't think this one casts quite as gray on my cheeks. I'm holding on to this one. I have one blush from W7. This is the Candy Blush in the shade Gossip. I like this formula, it's just not, mm, like I have so many and I'm looking at my pile over there and there is so many more that I need to reach for over this one. And because it's not a very unique shade to me, I am going to declutter this. I have one from Iconic London. It's the Kiss by the Sun Multi-Use Cheek Glow in So Cheeky. I am actually probably going to pick up another shade in this, the more pinky one, because I think this is a fabulous formula. It was one of my favorite releases of 2023. So this one is going nowhere. I have three of the blushes from Sephora, one in the old formulation and two in the new formulation. So I'm not like over the moon about these blushes and I wasn't even in the original. I held on to the original in kind of like my reference library in case I ever wanted to compare the formulas, but I don't, I haven't, I probably won't. It's kind of one of those things like, oh, I might do this, I might do that but I am going to fully declutter the old formulation. And both of these, because they're not my favorite formula, I would so much rather like grab for a lot of the other ones that I showed you. These ones I'm gonna hold on to for now in my reference library. I have two of the Milani Baked Powder Blushes. I've had these for a while. I don't know if I love this shade. Yes, I do, that's staying. And then Luminoso, this one is in Dolce Pink. This is Luminoso. This one I've had in my collection for a while, but both of these, so, so good. So I'm still holding on to those. Those, honestly, I would love to like pull out and get way more use out of. Oh, great. Look, there's now blush on them. I'm probably gonna start like a drawer where I start rotating some of my favorite products. I can really get use out of some of the ones that I really do love instead of ignoring them. I have one here from Essence. It's the blush lighter. I wanna say they don't make these anymore. In Cassis Sunburst, this again has also made it through many declutters. And again, I feel about it the way that I do the Milani ones. It's just super beautiful and need to get more use out of it. So that one is gonna stay. I have two here from Buxom. I've had these for a while. They're the Wanderlust Primer Infused Blushes. This one is in Seychelles and this one is in Dolly. Again, I feel the way that I feel about the Milani baked blushes, that I feel about these, they're super beautiful and they don't get enough use from me. These at one point were like my favorite powder blushes and I'd hate for them to like go bad before I get use out of them, but I'm still gonna hold on to them. Like I'm dying when I swatch these. It's such a shame I don't reach for these enough. I have two blushes from Pat McGrath. This one is in the shade Nude Venus 2, I think. And then this one is in the shade Divine Rose. These aren't my favorite formulas. I do like the Nude Venus 2 a little bit better. It's just a shimmery blush. And it's, I don't know, that's just really pretty. But this is a nice like buildable mauve shade too. And I think these are fairly relevant also. So I'm gonna hold on to both of those. I have one of the mineral blushes from MAC. It's in Sweet Enough. This needs to go into a chopping block as well because it's just not something that I reach for. It's a nice shade. Yeah, it's not bad but do I want to reach for this over some of the other ones? It like has a very slight sheen to it. It's not a lot, but yeah, I'm going to chopping block this one and see kind of how it looks on the cheeks before I get rid of it or decide whether it stays, I guess. I have two of the hourglass blushes, the ambient lighting blushes. I have diffused heat and mood exposure. I like these. Again, something I haven't reached for in a while. I've had this one in my collection for a few years. This one here, I haven't even used yet. I just got it. So I'm gonna hold on to this one, of course. But then this one, it's such a buildable, slightly sheeny product. It reminds me a lot of the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk, the Chic to Chic in this shade in particular. And I only have one of their palettes. So I think for now, I'm gonna hold on to this one as well. I have one here from Hermes. It's in 35 Rose Diore. This hasn't even gone into like a speed reviews yet. I kind of just picked it up. It's also like a sheeny orange blush. 
it has like this almost kind of purple shift. It's a pretty unique shade anyway. So, and I like the formula. It's just kind of highly fragranced and you know, a million dollars. There are other formulas on the market, but it just feels like kind of a unique shade for Hermes. So I'm definitely holding on to this one. Another brand new one to my collection. It's the Sweet Cheeks Matte Blush from NYX in the shade Bang Bang. I like this. I've been wearing this quite a lot lately. I think it's really pretty nice matte and it's actually not like super deep. Like once you blend it in, it's actually pretty straightforward and mauve on my cheeks and not like gray leaning. So I really do enjoy this. So because this hasn't gone into a speed reviews and I do in fact like it, I'm gonna hold on to it. I have decluttered my 001 pink Dior blush, but I have held on to the one in coral. I just never reach for this. Do I like it? Do I wanna hold on to this? I mean, honestly, I just don't reach for it. This one's gonna go into the chopping block too because it's a $40 blush. It's still really relevant. I just don't know if I wanna keep it for reference yet or if I really wanna get like use out of it. It's not typically a shade I would wear this time of year though. So I think I'm gonna hold on to it, to it until the spring. I'm gonna chopping block it anyway, but use it in the springtime. And if I don't end up like loving it, then I will either fully declutter it or move it into like the reference library. I have four RMS blushes. One is brand new to me. I just picked it up from Macy's when they're having their sale, but I have three other shades. This is a really special formula too. It's nice, lightly pigmented, but super buildable formula. And they all just have this like wonderful sheen. I think it's a tremendously beautiful, but also like straightforward product. Glass Slipper, Cur Royale, and Bohemian Girl. And I just picked up French Rosé. So I have like a peach, a Hadeep Mauve, a Terracotta, and then a pretty light pink shade. And I think this is like the best array. Like I love these and yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely holding on to all of them. Now let's talk about some blushes that came out of my reference library that I've already decluttered and I am going to fully declutter them. So I had one of the Clinique Cheek Pops. It's really beautiful product. It's just a shade thing for me. In Nude Pop, it casts way too gray on my cheeks. I don't know, my undertone, my skin tone, it doesn't show up enough. So I'm going to fully declutter this. Then this one from Oma Beauty, I got, I think it released in 2023. It's the Double Take Skin Perfecting Blush Duo and Fair Lady. Again, I think it's kind of a shade thing, too deep on the terracotta leaning side. And then this shimmery one is really beautiful, but I have that other places. So I'm gonna fully declutter this as well. I put this in my worst of beauty for 2023. It's one of the ColourPop pressed powder blushes. This one is in shortbread. These all like pop out on me at different times. This just was not a remarkable formula. Honestly, it was a little bit powdery and a little bit patchy. So I've already referenced it. I just don't wanna hold on to this product. I don't see myself reaching for it again or talking about it again. So I'm gonna let it go. And then also the Juvia's Place Blushed Duo. It's mostly a shade thing for me. I don't love this light peachy pink on me and I don't love this one as much as I thought I would. I thought I would enjoy this like more orangey shade, but it's so super matte and it reminds me a lot of the one from ZC that I decluttered. It's just a little bit too brown leaning when it gets to my cheeks. So I had also kept this in the reference and this one is also going to be decluttered. Okay, so I've held on to 39 powder blushes and there are six going into the chopping block. So these six do not go back into my drawer. They go into a separate bin and will be used immediately to decide whether or not they're going to stay in my collection or whether or not they are going to go. I am letting go of 18 and I actually did miscount. The two from Sephora, I was gonna put in the reference pile. So two are gonna go into reference. That means I'm only keeping 37 blushes, decluttering 18, six into the chopping block and two here. So I am fully getting rid of 
at least these 18. And by the way, you guys, I am going to do a full video talking about all the stuff that is going into my chopping block. So I am collecting all of that stuff up, but all of this stuff is going to get, I don't know, donated to my grandmother, see if my sister wants any, maybe my little niece. It goes to friends and family basically. So, and it's all been used, so I cannot donate any of it, but I will try to pass it along to those who might be interested. That is it for the powder blushes, you guys. Let's move on to cream and liquids. Okay, this is the start of my cream blushes. I didn't grab most of the sticks. There's a ton of sticks left, a couple of compacts, but I think we'll start here. This has definitely gotten out of control in 2023, fell in love with cream and liquid blushes. So a lot of these I do really like, but I need to be honest because there are some that I just keep because it's fun, but that I'm really not reaching for. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna kind of move these over here again, and then we'll start going through these. Two here from Melt. These are the cream blush lights in Honey Thief and Pink Sand. Some of my favorite cream blush formulas. I feel like not a lot of people talk about these, but they're super simple, easy to work with. They blend like super easily onto the cheeks. So I'm holding on to both of those. I have one here from Candy Paint, sorry, Half Caked. It's the Candy Paint Blush in Angel. It's fine, it's pretty, it's just a stickier formula. And it's just, you know, of all the blushes that I have, like not a unique shade. I don't love that it's super sticky. It's the kind that like your hair is gonna get stuck in. So I am gonna declutter this one. One here from MAC, it's the Glow Play Blush. I wanna say it's peach, cheer up. I haven't reached for this, but I need to. Again, such an easy formula to work with. It's like a, almost like a powder finish, even though it's like a putty formula. So I'm gonna hold on to this one as well. I just swatched this Mochi Pot from Kaja. It's in the shade Atmosphere, Bouncy Blendable Blush. It is basically like a cream to powder formula. And I honestly should put this in a chopping block. It still feels like it's really good. And I really enjoy the shade in this formula. So not a chopping block, a project pan, I'm sorry, a project pan. And I have two in here that were in a project pan that I feel like I'm probably gonna take out. Uh, so when we get to that, we'll talk about it, but I am gonna hold on to this one. One here from JCAT, it's the Blush Molo blush. I just don't love this shade is kind of what it comes down to. It's in Sweet and Chic. I think this is a really cool formula, but all of these blushes, they look super vibrant and this just isn't something that I'm reaching for and I've worn it recently. It's just a little too vibrant for me. So like the formula, again, it's kind of this cream to powder, really long lasting, but not reaching for the shade. So going to declutter this one. Another one that I'm gonna declutter is the Pretty Fly Cream Melt Blush from Doll Beauty. I like the shade because it's almost that peachy with the sparkle in it and it's like a cream to powder. It's actually kind of a unique shade and I think that's like the best thing about it. But I think it's probably like a little bit light when I blend it out. And yeah, I, I think that I just would rather reach for other ones over this one. Okay. There might be some chopping block items that wind up in here in a larger number than there were in the powders. So I'm gonna chopping block this because I can't make up my mind based on the swatch. One that I am gonna get rid of is from Item Beauty. It's one of the blush and light cream blushes and it's verified. It's a really pretty formula. Feels like a powder is just this light cream. Um, yeah, not an overly, swatching these is dangerous, I tell you what. I have so many blushes that I would rather reach for than this one, and I don't even know if this is a brand anymore that you can purchase, so I'm going to declutter this one also. And by the way, that Item Beauty one, while I think it's a beautiful, like, swatched blush, it was kind of one of those blushes, I'm getting blush everywhere, that I felt like was harder to pick up on a brush just based on the compact itself, so. Another one that I'm gonna declutter from Profusion is their Bestie Cream Blush. Again, it's very sticky, like the half-caked one. It's the kind that feels like your hair would kind of get into. This one, not as much, and it's really much more pigmented than that one. Just, again, if I'm gonna reach for a shade like this, I would rather reach for like the melt. Yeah, swatching these is just no good. This is a little bit of a harder formula, pretty simple and easy to work with. Uh, maybe too vibrant of a shade. So I'm, I don't know, I'm gonna declutter it. I have five of the ColourPop cream blushes. I don't know what these are called. I can't remember. They're called like the Crush blushes or something like that. I talked about these in my worst makeup releases of 2023 already. Some of them just flat out turned on me and they already kind of smell funny in some of them. 
and some of them changed colors. I don't know which one it was. This one like kind of changed from like this light peach to this dark. I don't know if you guys can see that, but yeah, not my favorite. And then one of these, just the packaging itself, like they're not very sturdy. One of them like completely falls out on me. I don't love this formula either. It's supposed to be natural matte finish and it feels like it has a ton of silicone in it. So it's like a more slippy blush, if that makes sense. Like it's just more slippy. It feels kind of greasy almost. So I don't know what the matte finish is about. I held on to two shades. This is Coyote and then this one is in Sunset Strip. And I think that these are two unique colors in my collection. So I'm going to hold on to these ones. Plus they don't smell as bad as the other three. So I'm going to hold on to these two. And I had these three in reference. I've already sort of decluttered them, but I wanted to talk about them in my worst of 2023 and I've done that. So these three, I am going to fully declutter. I have three blushes here. Two of them are in my project pan currently. And then one is just a duplicate of the Honest Beauty blush. So this one in rose pink is in my project pan. I have been testing so many blushes. I haven't really had time to use it much, but I just swatched it and the formula still feels good. Even though I can tell like part of it is dried out. It also still smells good. So I'm going to hold on to it for now and keep it in the project pan. This one from LYS is the higher standard satin matte in self love i just swatched it as well it also still smells good so i'm gonna continue working on these even though i really haven't gotten much use out of them since i put them in my project pan but this one from honest beauty same thing like it's the same product the cream cheek lip color in coral peach but for whatever reason this one's like dried out like over that one in rose pink i can still get a swatch but it's like super hard and sticky so I'm going to declutter that one, even though this one's newer than the other one. <laughs> one here from Laura Mercier. This is in Praline. It is the cream cheek color. I'm certain I bought this because of Mel Thompson. And I think it's getting on the older side, but I would like to continue using it. I think it's a really nice kind of like warm toned, like peachy shade. And yeah, so this is one that I would definitely like to like project pan. I can tell it's like getting drier so i think it won't make it maybe to the next declutter it'll have to go the next declutter if i just don't end up using it up i have one of the cheek kisses from milani it's the nude kiss not letting go of this but i would really like to get more use out of it because it is such a beautiful like pretty straightforward product bit of sheen to it lasts a good amount of time so holding on to this one I have two Tower 28 blushes. These still look good. This one is almost brand new. I've only used it a couple of times. This one is in Magic Hour and this one is in Happy Hour. Both still really beautiful. Love this shade. This is my absolute favorite. I feel like this is a unique shade and because it's new to me, I wanna hold on to both of those. Let's talk about some products that were in my reference library that I've been holding on to in case I ended up talking about them. The NYX Wonder Stick, Wonder Stick. And I just don't love the shades. They're just too bright pink for me. And yeah, it's a decent cream to powder formula. It's just that the shades just aren't my thing, but I think it's a beautiful formula. So I'm gonna take this out of reference. I'm gonna fully declutter this. Same thing with the Halo Glow Blush from e.l.f. This one is in Candlelit. Not enough pigmentation for me, and honestly, I prefer the Charlotte Tilbury ones more than this. So 2023 is almost done. I'm just gonna fully declutter this one. This one from LA Girl, this is the soft matte cream blush. This one is in the shade Rosebud. Beautiful formula, like super easy to work with, very, very simple. It just comes out way more pink than the packaging looks like, and I guess, you know, I wasn't thinking Rosebud would look this like bright pink just not really a shade that I reach for that often. So that is the only reason I am going to declutter this. Also talked about this, I think in worst of 2023, just not pigmented enough. It's the Tarte Blush Tape in Peach. I wanna say it's just peach. Yeah, just peach. Too metallic of a finish, not pigmented enough for me personally. So going to fully declutter that. And the Liquid Blush from Beauty Bay is, it's okay, it's in peaches. It's just on the drier side. And I have so many other formulas that are similar to this that I prefer more than this one. So I won't reach for this. Um, I'm going to declutter this one. I have one of the Bobbi Brown blushes in 
Calypso Coral. I think this is a gorgeous formula. Straightforward. It's kind of a, a sheeny product. It has a little bit of a stick to it. It reminds me a lot of the Profusion one, honestly. And so because I'm decluttering this one, I'm going to hold on to this one from Bobbi Brown. I just think this is a smoother formula and not quite as sticky. Holding on to it. Two blushes that are definitely going into the chopping block is the one from Rowan. It's in Natural Rose. It's pretty, but it's it's not my favorite formula. It's a little bit stiffer, and I think maybe it's not as pigmented as I would like, and I think it casts a little bit gray, but I am gonna chopping block this, so it's gonna go with the one with from Doll Beauty. And then the Ritual Defeat one, this is a scent thing for me. It smells very highly of what I refer to as eucalyptus. I don't know, I don't think that I love the way this smells. I think I love it more on the cheeks, but yeah, chopping block, if it doesn't end end up being one that I like fall in love with and I'm going to declutter it. It's the Inner Glow Pigment in the shade Desire. One here from Sigma in Corderosa. Pretty new and I really do like this for like a warm tone blush so I'm gonna hold on to that. Then I have one here from Half Magic. It's called the Cheek Fluff and Don't Be a Doll. Pretty nice like clay formula. It's like a cream to powder and it performs really well. Pretty straightforward product and pretty long lasting so holding on to that one. I was telling you guys about the Armani Neo Nude blush. Oh my gosh, you literally have to pry this out of my hand. It's like one of my favorite blushes. I honestly wanna pick up more of these in like different shades, cause this one in 30 is a bit intense. Like it's just more terracotta than I'm reaching for, but this is like a special formula. It, I could literally swatch it all the way down my arm. So I'm definitely holding on to that one. I have several blushes from Ulta. I almost think I have one more that I don't see like readily available right now. I think it's one of my sticks. I like their shades. I think they do a really good job with making like these orange colors that have like gold in them and they're very pretty like for shading. And I like that about them. I don't think that they're bad. It's just that I don't find myself reaching for them. You see how both of them have like this gold reflect in them. I honestly don't find myself reaching for these colors as much anymore. I feel like I'm reaching for mauves. I go back and forth. Like one year it'll be I'll reach for all orange and the next year it'll be that I'll just reach for all mauve shades. So I hate decluttering something even if it's not like my shade preference now or even my season preference. I think I'm just gonna hold on to these in reference but I'm gonna declutter them. And I say that because I have all three Ulta and it's nice to kind of talk about them if it comes up. But yeah, I'm just not gonna hold on to these in my permanent collection because I have so many other ones I would absolutely love to reach for more. So these are the first two in reference. Couple of duos and trios, Patrick Ta, don't get enough use out of this one. This one is in the shade, do we know her? So one cream, one powder, really nice formula. Would love to use this more often. One size probably has to be one of my favorites matte shimmer and cream and i think it is a spectacular form formula in the cheek clapper this one is in very that um yeah i don't want to get rid of these i i absolutely do not reach for these enough when from stila i'm really partial to this formula it's like a melting balm with more intense pigmentation it reminds me of the melt cream blush light again really want to get more use out of it it's in gerbera <laughs> It's in Gerbera, but I'm gonna hold on to this one. I have some lip blushes from Huda, and I put these in my worst of beauty for 2023. I held on to these. These were already like decluttered, but put into the reference library. These are gone. These are done. I have no use for these whatsoever. They're terrible. They stain. They don't blend in. And then I have two here from ColourPop, one in the matte finish and one in the pearlized finish. Pearlized is in no way. The matte is in count me in this is a product i haven't tried yet like i've swatched it i have used a matte formula color pop super shock before but it dried out really quickly and i didn't get a ton of use out of it so i want to try this formula but the pearlized one even though it was older than the matte one that i have already decluttered it's just a wetter creamier formula so it seems to be lasting a lot longer and this is definitely a kind of finish that I'm reaching for a lot lately, which is like really shimmery. So I'm gonna hold on to both of those. Then I have some sticks here that I love all of these, to be honest. Um, I have this one from Nude Sticks. It's the Core Glow, I think is what it's called. Nudie's Matte Glow Core, I said it backwards, in Rose Glow. This is beautiful, super simple, 
glowy but not sticky so this stays this is one of my favorite formulas from about face it's her a more affordable brand the af94 that sold in walmart i have another shade in this i don't think i've pulled it out yet but i purchased this one because i like this formula so much i wanted to get another one this one is in first prize but i have not used this shade yet so that stays summer fridays this is my favorite stick balm that launched in 2023 much more pigmented than i thought it was going to be for a balm it's a really nice super simple formula and it's actually quite long lasting what shade do i have i have it in the shade dusty rose so keeping that one and then ami Kole. i've only used this once but i love this it's a soft matte i think cream multi-stick and i want to say it's supposed to be like a soft matte finish and it's in dune i think is the shade so also holding on to that one the final two that came out of my reference library were the nars the multiple in the shade south beach i just don't like this it's not enough pigment it's too sheeny of a product on my cheeks it's like once you blend it in it's not even there really and it's more like metallic i don't know not even metallic it's like gold sparkles not my thing so i'm not going to keep this in reference i'm going to fully declutter this and same thing with this one i was really sad the air matte blush in orgasm again just not pigmented enough for me so don't need to keep these going to declutter as well and the very final product that's new that i haven't even used yet is the cheek do serum blush from ColourPop. This is in the shade Kiss Kiss. I don't know if this is going to be a shade that I love, but I want to test the formula out. This came in a mystery box from ColourPop that I purchased for Black Friday. So holding on to it until I decide whether I like it or not. I have four blushes here from Revlon. These are pretty new releases. These are the gel serum blushes. I have all of the shades that they have, and I think this is a beautiful formula. It's actually quite pigmented but you can sheer it out it looks like putty when you first swatch it and then it becomes this really gel like consistency but it like stains the cheek especially this color right here which is in 130 i don't remember what they call it other than 130 but i think these are beautiful i am holding on to all of those i have one blush from she glam left this is the afternoon peach the cheeky color jam this came from a collection not a shade that i'm really reaching for right now just a little bit too burnt i think it's such a beautiful formula but uh not buying any she glam products anymore and oof there's just so many other ones that i would rather reach for so i'm going to declutter this one i have two here from flower beauty these are the blush balms i have the shade spiced i think and then melon i also think these are a beautiful formula again pretty straightforward they're really long lasting but they're super easy to blend into the cheeks and not sticky so i'm gonna hold on to these then i have one blush here from Colfi. it's the mendy moment blush in garland glow I really enjoy the formula. I don't know if I love this shade, but um, I'm, I'm really liking the Colfi products right now. So I, I'm going to hold on to this one. I don't think I can part with this one. I need to get more use out of it. It's the Color Me Clean, Clean, Cream Blush in Doll Face from Believe Beauty. It's such an awesome formula. It's so pigmented. It's five bucks. It lasts all day. It's, it's just, it's so lightweight and blendable i just it stays like I'm, I'm definitely not getting rid of that one i have two here from phytosurgeons in fume and in condensate i want to say these are from different collections the fume one i want to say is i can't even remember these are like the earthy tone ones and something else i don't know i think these are just absolutely gorgeous they're very similar to honestly like the believe beauty one maybe these are a little bit thicker of a consistency this one is a thinner formula but these hello oops <laughs> okay we're washing this blanket afterward these are immensely easy to work with and super pigmented these are my favorite products from phytosurgeons so i'm holding on to those as well i have one fluffy blush from pacifica this needs to go into a chopping block i really like this formula i just don't know if this is a shade i'm really reaching for this one is in the shade sunset I think it's actually really super simple formula and yeah it's like a cream to powder almost really just easy but 
again, I need to decide whether I'm gonna reach for it or I'm just gonna look at it forever. So chopping block this. Oof, this is one that has made it through many declutters as well. It's the Primrose and Cream Lip and Cheek Cream Palette from Seraphine Botanicals. It doesn't, it's not a shade, but it came in a boxy charm. It was like a boxy charm exclusive item. These are immensely pigmented. They are super easy to work with. And I think I like all of the shades, maybe not this one out here, but I like both of these. Honestly, I haven't reached for this in a while. I need to chop and block this one too and like test it again to see if it's something I wanna hold on to. This one from Merit, believe it or not, it's just gotta go in reference. This one is in Beverly Hills, it's their blush balm. It's just not a formula that I absolutely love. I know that it's very relevant at the current moment. A lot of people like it, but for me, it's just a little bit too emollient, too sheeny, too not pigmented, I guess. I don't know. It's just, it's not my preferred style. So I am going to hold on to it, but for reference only, not in my permanent collection. I have one here from Shayna B. This is also a BoxyCharm item. It's the Cream Blush in Rosa. It's, um, it's again, it's a decent formula. It's just not better than a lot of the other ones that I have. So um, I'm going to declutter this one. I have two here from Cara Beauty. Cara Beauty, I say Cara. They're their lip and cheek whips. They're good. They're called like the soft serve and they have like what feels like a ton of silicone in them. They feel really emollient and creamy and they're super staining. They're just not in good shades for me. They're just too vibrant, and I think all of them came very vibrant. Cara Cara Mousse and Cherry on Top. I I just know I won't reach for these. They're they're cool. It's just I'm not I'm not using shades this intense. So I'm gonna declutter both of these. I'm sad, but I'm I'm going to. I have one here from Holika Holika. It's the Jelly Dough Blusher in the shade Grapefruit Jelly. This honestly needs to go into a chopping block as well. Again, kind of a peachy shade. I don't know if I'm reaching for. It's so like easy to work with because it's like this cream to powder. I'm, I'm chopping blocking this. Chopping blocking. I'm chopping blocking. I'm going to put this in a chopping block. I've got five now, so this makes six. And I will be, I will be using them. One here from Simi Hayes. Hmm, I might chopping block this too. Simi Hayes, it's the Solar Tint Blush Duo in Tropic. It's got one matte side and one kind of sheeny side. Do I love this color? Again, it's like a color thing. It just comes down to, am I using these oranges right now? I'm gonna chopping block this as well. I don't know if it's something I wanna hold on to. I have one here from Tarte that I am gonna hold on to. It's the Maracuja Juicy Blush in the shade Rose. Honestly, I wish they would expand their shade range in this. I think they only have three colors. It's a really nice formula. It's kind of on the stickier side, but it's so pigmented and it lasts all day. And honestly, I prefer this formula over like say the Ulta one that's kind of similar. Um, but again, only three shades. I would like to see them expand their shade range, but I'm gonna hold on to that. I have three of the cream blushes from Fenty. Hmm, these are fairly new to me. I just don't know. I feel like I've just put them like recently into like a speed reviews. Again, I just don't know if these are like something I absolutely love. They're maybe a little bit too sheer for me, but for now I'm gonna hold on to them and I don't know, maybe play with them a little more. I have so many. I just don't know if this is a formula that I am like absolutely gonna reach for over others, but I'm gonna hold on to them for a little while longer. I have one cream to powder formula from Oma by Sharon C. It's the Flawless IRL Blush in Audacity. This is a slept on blush. So good, so good, 10 bucks. Keeping that, I have one from Moira Beauty. Also love this, it's the Love Heat Cream Blush in the shade I Respect You. This is my second shade. So I have had one before because I loved the formula so much. It just wasn't a shade that I ended up liking on me. I prefer this one a little bit more. I'm holding on to that one. I have two here from About Face. And I thought they were gonna end up being a little bit different in color. It's raunchy and then quickie. And um, these are the Cheek Freak Blush Balms. I really do like these. I don't know if I need both of these shades though. That's the thing. Do I need both of these shades? These again are kind of like, um, like a cream to powder balm and they have what feels kind of like silicone to them. They're like on the lighter side. I like that about them, but do I need both shades? I just, I feel like I don't. You know what? I'm gonna get rid of raunchy and I'm gonna keep quickie. Quickie is more of like a peach shade. I just don't know if I'm reaching for like 
these oranges right now. So I'm gonna declutter this and keep this one. I have two of the M Cosmetics pillow blushes, pillow plush blush, sorry, in Tickled and Peanut. And I think these are the only two shades that are out currently. More mauve shade and then purpley. This is such an easy, straightforward formula. Like it's pigmented, easy putty-like formula. I just think these are beginner friendly. I wanna say M Cosmetics does some of my absolute favorite powder, cream. I think the only ones that I didn't really love were the serum blushes, but that's just a preference thing. They weren't necessarily bad. I am gonna hold on to these ones. I have three of the Pillow Talk Matte Blushes from Charlotte Tilbury, and I wanna say I wanna hold on to all three of these. Look at this, some of these are just staining me. Pink, well, I'm sorry, peach, pink, and then this one is my favorite in Pillow Talk. Yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna put this one in a chopping block, the one in Pink Pop, because I just don't know, that's not like my favorite, favorite shade. Um, yeah, because these are pretty unique. I just don't, I don't know, I don't reach for light pinks that often, so Chopping Block, and then I'm going to keep these two. I have two of the Juicy Pang blushers, and they are in the shades. Finding the shades is like a puzzle, and I literally don't remember where it was. These are from a Pew. I wanna say it's 05 and 09. I think these are fun. I enjoyed using them. They have like a nail polish remover, not remover, nail polish applicator. I, I just don't think I'm gonna reach for these, quite honestly. I think it's nice, it's just uh, convenience wise, I would so much prefer reaching for other ones, so I'm gonna declutter these. I have the Pixie On The Glow blush in the shade Juicy. I really like this, like, I don't know if I'm gonna reach for the shade that much, but I think it's a really good formula, a little bit juicy on the cheeks, and I like just kind of like swiping it on and stamping it in, so for now I'm gonna hold on to this. I am gonna let this one go. This one is probably gonna be expired. It's one of my older blushes in my collection from Winky Lux. It doesn't smell bad. It's the Cheeky Rose Blush in Tea Time, but I never reach for this, and it's, it's just on the dry side, so. I am gonna throw this one away. I've had it for a while. It's beautiful and I love it. And it was a good formula, but I'm gonna let it go. I have one of the color fixes from Danessa Myricks. This is a multi-use product. So I keep it in my blushes, but I am probably gonna move this to like my singles, um, like eyeshadows. And this one is in the shade Latte, but I'm gonna hold on to this. I have one of the Beauty Light Wands in the high blush. I don't even know if they make it like this anymore. It's, this is in Pinkasm. It's called a high blush. Do they make pinkasm? I don't know. Some some of them have been changed, but this is, I'm not letting this go. I'm probably gonna end up putting this in a project pan very next, so this one stays. I have two of the Sun Flushed Liquid Blushers from BH Cosmetics. I don't know what the shades are because they were on the packaging, and so they have like, you know, they've since gone away. I wish they wouldn't do that, but I love these. These are awesome and pretty affordable. And as far as like liquid blushes go, like I think these are 10 out of 10, honestly. So I'm gonna hold on to those. And then finally, the one from Glossier, the Cloud Paint in Dusk, I'm gonna put this in a shopping block. Not even sure I remember how this formula performs. Like, is it matte? Is it dewy? Like, it's been so long, I can't even remember. So I'm going to chopping block this one. So I'm keeping 52 blushes from this particular section and I am going to put three into reference. That may seem silly, it's just like how my brain works, I guess. So three will go into reference and nine are going into the chopping block. I am decluttering 28 from this section. Haha, <laughs> I have never decluttered. I've never decluttered 28 of anything in one group before ever. So 28 are fully going out of my collection. Now I'm gonna move on to all of the sticks. I think all I have left is the stick blushes. Okay, so I did find some more compact like blushes and then the rest of these are sticks and liquids. So let me move this over here. I have two here from Calibre. These are the Super Bloom. Is that Super Bloom? SoCal Super Bloom Lip and Cheek Hydrating Soft Stains. 
I like these. These are very different. They do leave a stain on the cheeks, but they have a lot of luminosity to them. They're very, very dewy. I have Wildflower and Heat Wave. I am gonna hold on to these. I also haven't put those in a speed reviews yet either. Then I have one from Wander Beauty, also hasn't gone into a speed reviews. I really like this. This is a duo. It comes with a cream blush and it's a really nice like mauve shade. And then it comes with a clear highlighting balm, which I didn't think I was gonna be a fan of these clear highlighting balms until I tried this. I actually think this is really beautiful and I'm super partial to like the way that it looks on me. So I'm definitely holding on to this. It's called the Double Date Lip and Cheek in Honeymoon and Swipe, I guess. This is Honeymoon and the one at the bottom is called Swipe as far as like shades go. So holding on to this one. One from Rose Ink. It is the Lip and Cheek color in Camellia. I do really like this shade. It's just you're kind of like standard mauve shade. It's so much better, I think, than her cream eyeshadows and also the bronzer, the cream bronzer that comes from this line. I think those are much more of a drier formula and this one has much more like moosiness about it. It's just a little bit more emollient. So I do enjoy this formula and I just, I'm, I'm really into like this mauve tone blush right now. So I'm holding on to that one. I think I'll just get the ones that haven't gone into a speed reviews like out of the way first. So this one is from Mob Beauty. It's one of their clay blushes in M72. It's a very beautiful cream blush, super straightforward formula. It's like a cream to powder finish. This is like a removable product so you can recycle these. Just a fan of this formula overall, very simple and easy to use. Then I have one from RMS Beauty. This is one of the, I think, lip to cheeks, yes, in Demure. I like this formula also. Again, very easy to work with, with a brush, with a sponge, really anything. But I just really like the shade. It's different and it's not as like cool toned pink as like some of the pinks that are really popular. It's a little bit more warm than that. So I really enjoy the shade if I'm reaching for a pink and I'm just overall like a fan of RMS products. So I'm holding on to that one. And then finally, I think this is the last, no, there's a couple more I guess that haven't gone into a speed reviews. This is the Huda Beauty Pretty Grunge Blush in Punk Pink. Actually, it's called the Blush Gloss, I guess. This is one of those pH changing blushes. It's okay. It's actually really, really pigmented. So you don't want to go in with too much because it once it warms up, it the pigment gets way more intense and it, it provides a nice gloss to the skin. It's pretty. Don't know if this is going to stay, but it hasn't gone into a speed reviews yet. I want to say this is my final one that hasn't gone in. This is one of the stick blushes from Le Bouche Rouge. It's the Le Blush Nude. Interesting packaging, all of Le Bouche Rouge's stuff is. It is just a standard cream to powder formula. I, again, really like this shade for something very, very neutral. It reminds me a lot of the Praline blush from Laura Mercier that's getting on the drier side in terms of tone. So I am gonna hold on to this one. I have two stick blushes from Kiko Milano. I am such a big fan of Kiko Milano and I would love to be a super fan of these. These are the Velvet Touch Creamy Sticks and I have it in 08 and 03. One is a peach shade and one is a mauve shade. The problem is I always have to lay these down before powder because they do not lay on top of powder well because they're an extremely cream to powder formula. They're just on the drier side and they like pill up and lay funny on top of powder. And the way that I apply my makeup is I usually powder and then put blush on. So I don't like a more finicky product. I don't know. You know, I think what I'm gonna do with these is put these in a chopping block as well because I have so many other ones that if this just stays a finicky formula for me, I would just ignore these. I'll reach for the other ones over these ones. So yeah, I'm gonna put these in a chopping block. I will test them again and decide if they stay or go. I have one baby tint here from Relove. I think this is like one of my more liked products from the Relove line. It's nice, it's almost like a stain. It's a little bit of a tackier formula. It kind of has a strong scent to it. Um, yeah, no, maybe not a little bit. It's pretty sticky. It's not overly pigmented. It honestly just looks more like a stain than anything. See how diffused this can look? It's just not super intense, but I have so many products in my collection. This one does not rank as like, you know, one of the ones that I love and will think of reaching for over some of my other ones. So I'm going to declutter this. This is the Essence Baby Got Blush 
This is in the shade Peaches. I want to say Peaches and Cream. It's nice. It's a little bit of a finicky product for me. I find that this has to be picked up like specifically from the component on a brush and then tapped into the cheeks because if I draw this on, it fades in a really strange way. Again, not my favorite over some of my other formulas. And yeah, this came out this year. I think I am going to fully declutter this one. I have one of the blurshes by Made by Mitchell. This one is in the shade Peach Sugar. Is this the only one that I have? No, I have two. One is a Shy Boy and the other one is Peach Sugar. I actually really enjoy this formula over the one that I was showing you guys that I decluttered from Beauty Bay. It's more of a drier consistency, but this one has a little bit more emollients than the Beauty Bay one, which is like almost flat looking on the cheeks. This one has more dimension and I like both of these shades. So I'm gonna hold on to these. Here is my other Ulta Beauty blush that I have. This one is just the too cheeky in the stick form. Again, the shade is so similar. They have these like orange sparkles kind of infused in the pigment. It's actually kind of pretty. Um, this one is not as peach though. This one has like a, more of a, like a pinky coral shade, I kind of want to say. Mm, I really like the way this feels though. This one's going to go into a chopping block because I just, I prefer this formula over the other two from Ulta. I'm just not sure this like ranks higher than some of them. It's just such a simple product to use though. So I don't know, chopping block of that one. I have two affordable ones, one from Wet n Wild. It's one of their Mega Glow blush sticks. This one is in the shade Floral Majority. I don't think I can part with this. This is one of those like, you know, it performs like a $32 stick blush, but it's really, you know, $3.99 sort of thing. I actually think it's like $5.99 or something, but it's so good and so easy to work with. And it is actually a really long lasting formula too. So I'm going to hold on to it. This one from LA Girl is the Velvet Blush Stick, and this one is in Velour. This one I don't like as much as the one from Wet n Wild, because I just don't think it lasts as long as the one from Wet n Wild, but I'm gonna hold on to this one. I think, you know what? Both of these I am going to move into reference because these are the most affordable ones that I'm gonna keep in my collection, but I wanna get more use out of that are more expensive, just, you know, because these are easier to replace than those other ones. So these ones are going to go just into reference basically for affordable products, but I definitely wanna reach for more expensive items. So speaking of which, this one kind of very similar to those other two, a little bit different of a shade. It's the uh, stick blush from ABH in Latte. See, it's like, this has to be like $32 or $28 or something like that. But it's a pretty straightforward formula, just like the other two, but I would rather get my money's worth out of this one. Plus I really like the shade, so I'm holding on to that one. Another very similar formula is the Wander Beauty On The Glow. This one has a blush and highlighting stick. The blush didn't used to be my favorite. It was kind of pinky for me, but now I feel like I'm reaching for colors like that more frequently. It's in Coral Rose. Plus I also really like this highlighter. It's, it's less pigmented, like once it blends out, it's just this really beautiful glow. Again, a straightforward formula, cream to powder. Actually, I think this one is a little bit more kind of emollient, a little bit more sheen on the cheeks than the one from ABH, which I think is like a fully cream to powder formula. I really enjoy this. Nobody talks about this, but I'm gonna hold on to it. This one from AF94 is the other one that I was telling you, because um, I showed you the orange one. This one is in If You Dare. This one is such a unique color in my collection. It's like purple, but it's like infused with maybe goldish sparkles. It's so unique. It's kind of like that coyote shade that I was showing you in the cream blushes from ColourPop. I really don't have many shades like this. Plus I really just love this formula. It's super simple. So and that is why I picked up another shade. I am definitely holding on to that one. I have one here from Laura Geller. It's the Italian Marble Blush Stick in the shade Apricot Spritz. I was telling you guys I love her powder formula. I just don't think this one is remarkable. It's nice. It's just that I have other ones that I like more than this. Yeah, I just don't find myself reaching for this over some other ones. So I am going to declutter this one. I have one here from Undone Beauty. This is really interesting product, kind of different in my collection. Not something I reach for all the time, but 
I think it has a place because it's so unique. This is one of their water blushes in the shade Peach. It looks like super deep red, but it's not. Like once it gets to the cheeks, it's cold, like to the touch. And it's a lighter blush, but it's almost like a stain. I don't know, I think it's really cool. And because it's unique, I am gonna hold on to it. One that I am letting go is the Supernatural Stick Multi-Use Blush from Well People. I am just not a fan of Well People products. This one has to be my favorite over the bronzer. Just not remarkable. I feel like Well People's are just a little bit expensive for how I feel about their products. And I have this shade like 12 times over, I'm pretty sure, so. I'm going to let this one go. I have two of the liquid blushes from Moira Beauty, one in 04 My Darling, and then 03 Honey Pie. These are called the Love Steady Liquid Blushes. I love these. I feel like they're way more emollient than a lot of their counterparts that are in this style packaging. They're super pigmented, like really opaque, very straightforward product to use and simple to apply. So as far as the products like them go, I have to say these are probably my favorite even over the Juvia's Place ones. So I'm gonna hold on to these also. As you can see, I'm like holding on to a lot of stuff. I feel like this is the kind of category right now I'm just like really in love with. So it's hard for me to let stuff go. I have one cream blush, stick blush, from M Cosmetics, it's the So Soft in Venetian Rose. This one needs to go in like a project pan because this is one of my favorites and I honestly do not reach for it nearly enough. So opaque, such a simple formula. Little bit of product goes a really long way. Yeah, wanna get more use out of it and it's not like I'm minimizing the sticks at this point, but I do feel like my drawer so far in putting the blushes back that I have kept kind of looks like I've done a decent job in decluttering. Speaking of decluttering, I am going to get rid of the liquid blush from Makeup Revolution. It isn't bad. This is actually a really nice product for Makeup Revolution. And I think that it performs really well, like it's longevity and easy to apply. But as far as these blushes go, I really prefer Moira and Juvia's Place over this formula. I think this one is a little bit more sheer. It's nice, but yeah, again, like if it comes to something looking like this for ease of use, there are, for example, like these ones from Makeup by Mario that I feel like give kind of a similar dewy looking effect that I would rather reach for over this. So I am going to declutter this. And we might as well talk about these, the Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veils in Just Peachy and Barely Blushing. These are such a thin, kind of sheer formula. They're really easy to work with. And if I'm looking for just a, a real flush of color, not super intense pigmentation, and for my cheeks to look dewy, I absolutely love these, so I am holding on to both of those. This one, I don't know if I'm gonna keep. This is the Tarte Man Eater Blush and Glow Cheek Plump in Peach, no, Coral. It's actually really nice. I'm looking at my stash over there, and I just don't know if I'll reach for this one over some of the other ones. This one is tough for me because I do really like it. I actually think Tarte does a really good job with their blushes. Aside from the powder Amazonian clay singles, I haven't been a huge fan of those, even though those are, were like super viral. I have the NARS Afterglow. Yeah, Afterglow Liquid Blush and Orgasm. I'm trying to swatch these side by side because I feel like these are similar. And I don't mind this. I think this has a place and time in the world being a little bit more sheer, being a little bit more dewy. You know, I'm not entirely ready to let this go. I honestly love both of those. It is so hard. I'm like struggling with these because I'm trying to be realistic, but I really do like them. It's just that I like see other ones that I would rather reach. For. I'm gonna hold on to these, I can't. I just can't. Like that's, oof. Liquid and cream blush are so difficult. I have one here from Simi Hayes. This is one of their Sunflush All Over Tints in Peach. I don't know about this one. I don't think it's bad, but as far as like blushes go, doesn't this somewhat look like the NARS? And I prefer the NARS one over this like small doe foot applicator. I don't know if this can be used for the lips, but I probably wouldn't anyway. Um, I don't think it's a bad product. I actually think it's pretty simple. A little bit more sheer, which again, you know, sometimes is nice 
I think I would just rather reach for the NARS, which I don't dislike. Maybe not the exact same shade, but pretty similar. Also, maybe this one is a little bit more close to this shade. So I'm gonna declutter the Simi Haze. And I have one posh, cheeky posh stick from Victoria Beckham in the shade Knickers. This one is getting older in my collection, but I really do like Victoria Beckham products. Again, not really reaching for a shade like this, but not really ready to let that go yet. So I'm gonna hold on to it. I have one here from Make Beauty. This is one of their heat stroke blushes in Inflamed. Now this is a really unique color in my collection. It reminds me a lot of the water blush from Undone Beauty, but this one actually has some intensity. Uh, yeah, because it's such a unique color, I'm gonna hold on to it and see if I love it in like springtime. That's, you know, it'll be upon us before we know it. The Say Blush, one of my favorites from 2023. These are called this Glow Sculpt. This one is in Peach Glow. Again, I kind of wish I got a different shade, but I love this formula. It's kind of like this whipped consistency with gold pigments in it. Again, like gold shimmer particles that just make it look really juicy on the cheeks without being actually emollient and sticky. So I'm holding on to that one. One from Westman Atelier. This is their Baby Cheeks Blush Stick in Petal, which has got to be their most popular shade. Very straightforward product, just a cream to powder formula and basically a mauve shade. So I don't know, packaging, formula. I'm gonna hold on to that one. Then I have one from REM Beauty. Also going to hold on to this one. This is my favorite thing from REM Beauty. Favorite, favorite thing. The Cheek and Lipstick in Audition. It's one of my longest lasting cream blushes in my collection. Man, this is opaque. This kicks butt in pigmentation. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. I have two of the Juvia's Place liquid blushes. I wanna swatch both of these cause I have Peach Rose and then I have Marigold. Again, I don't know if I'm reaching for Marigold right now. Am I? I mean, I like this formula. It's again, super intense and pigmented, but I'm just not reaching for peachy shades quite as much. And I don't wanna hold out of something that I'm literally not gonna use because that's so orange. Now let's like mix them together. Mmm, that's kind of pretty. That was like sheared out. <sighs> okay, they stay. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's me trying to get it off. One of my favorite products from this year was the Yummy Skin Blushes or Color Flush, whatever they're called, I don't know. Rose and Brunch from Danessa Myricks. Super straightforward, really pigmented. I mean, I love this product. Like it just doesn't get easier for me. So I'm holding on to that one for sure. I have one of Nudie Mattes from Nude Sticks. It's in the nude. I'm gonna hold on to this one too. I, I mean, I just love their formula cause it's super easy to work with. It's just a shade thing. Again, I'm not sure I'm reaching for shades like this right now, but I am gonna hold on to it for the time being, my lid isn't like shutting all the way, which makes me feel like it's gonna dry out quicker. One blush stick from Chanel, it's in number 24, which is like a coral, like an orange shade. This one also has like golden suspended sparkles, but these actually like, they look like sparkles in the swatch. I don't think this is my favorite formula, but it's pricey and I, I don't know, I just like holding on to luxury because it's much harder for me to declutter luxury than anything else, of course. I pay my own personal hard-earned money for these, so I feel like, oh, you're gonna give me some use. <laughs> <laughs> then I have one from Euphoria, which is the Turn Up the Sunshine BYO Blush Oil. This is such a cool product, honestly. I am such a fan. It's like a tint, or a stain rather, not a tint. And, but it like, it gives you time to work with it. It really just like stays emollient until you're done. And then it like dries where you left it. I think it's a good product. I, I need to put this in a chopping block because Again, it's not one that I think to reach for for ease of use. I just think it's cool. And I kind of feel like I've done like a couple of cool already. I don't know. Some of these are just kind of different and that's why I've held on to them. But this needs to go into a chopping block to really see like, am I gonna actually reach for this or not? So chopping block, whoopsie daisy. Now I'm stained. I'm in trouble now. It's like literally not coming off. I have two of the blush balm sticks from Pat McGrath in Paradise Peony and Peach Lotus. These colors are very similar. I actually really like this formula. So anyone who doesn't like it, I don't know. I just think of a blush balm as, as kind of more sheer and really sheeny. That one is in Paradise Peony. 
Let's see how close these are. And then once they translate to the cheeks, they're very, very similar. I don't think I need both of these. I prefer, I don't know, this one, oh, I'm gonna hold on to both of them for right now. And then the final one that I have here is the Urban Decay Hydromaniac. I really like this. Again, like just a different kind of unique product that I feel like really performs well. Maybe again, not something that I reach for for ease of use, but it's really juicy, good pigmentation, actually quite easy to apply. So I'm still gonna hold on to this one as well. Okay, so I held on to 34. <laughs> I really didn't do that good of a job this time. I don't know, I guess I didn't think I would. And then I am going to declutter six of them. Ooh, that's such a bad ratio. I just love cream blushes, but I got rid of 18 powder blushes. Was it 18? Now I can't even remember. So I am decluttering these six. I technically am decluttering these. I'm gonna put these in reference, so that's seven, eight, and then four of them are going into a chopping block. And by the way, you guys, if you're interested in seeing the chopping block, I might do a video applying it, but I'm definitely doing a video going over everything and talking about it. So if you guys are interested and you're not subscribed, like subscribe and check back for that video. I don't know. I kind of think it'll be fun. I don't want to declutter just for the sake of decluttering. I mean, I see that a lot, but I pay for literally everything on my own. And so it's painful when I buy it and then it's okay, but I don't get enough use out of it and I don't feel like I did. So I really wanna give it a fair shot before I just go and declutter for the sake of decluttering. So anyway, technically decluttering eight, four in the chopping block and keeping the others. Let's move on to bronzers. Okay, I have pulled out all of my powder bronzers let's start going through these i don't think this is going to be brutal I, I really don't i feel like i've done a pretty decent bronzer declutter kind of recently so i don't know yeah again i don't think this will be super brutal the true match the l'oreal true match bronzy lumi bronze it wow i'm just talking too fast super great like light tone neutral shade with a little bit of sheen to it i just don't think you can go wrong with this this one is in the shade 01 light so I'm holding on to that one. This one from Victoria Beckham is one of her contour bricks. I think these are okay. I think it's a little bit of a harder pressed formula. I can only really use that shade. This one doesn't really show up on me, but if I kind of mix them together, it's fine. Um, not my favorite product, but this is like removable. You can take out all of Victoria Beckham stuff. I think I'm gonna hold on to this because it's quite expensive. Um, and really that's kind of the only reason. I have other formulas that I do enjoy more than this but holding on to it. The Milani powder bronzer in, the Silky Matte bronzer in Sunlight, I think it's good. I have held on to this one because it's kind of a, a light, look at that, man, whew. A lighter toned, kind of more neutrally shade, but this one's gonna go into a chopping block. I just don't know if this is something I'll reach for over other ones. So chopping block of that one. Then I have one here from Believe Beauty. I love this formula. It has a bit of sheen to it. It's the Sunstruck Marbleized Bronzer in Sunkissed Honey, but this happens to be the second deepest shade. This is not the lightest, so this is a little bit too deep for me. Yeah, I just, I think it's, hmm, I don't know. It's kind of more almost like a, like a contouring shade. I feel like I can get away with it, but I just don't reach for it. And if I wanted to use this product, it's like I could get the lighter shade and it's like $5 and you know, there's a, a dollar general on like every corner. So I'm gonna declutter this one. I have one here from Relove. It's the super bronzer in the shade desert and it's okay. It's a little bit too warm, I think. Actually, it's not terribly bad. There are so many other ones though that I prefer over this and I do wanna do some damage with this declutter, so I'm gonna let this one go. I have one from W7, it's the Honolulu bronzer. This is obviously supposed to be duping the Hula bronzer. This one I feel like is too deep of a shade. So I love this formula, it's just that it's a little bit too deep. Let me swatch it against one that I use all of the time and it's a good shade match for me. It's the Becca Sunlit Bronzer in Bali Sands. This is a really beautiful formula and I'm kind of trying to pan this currently. See how much lighter this is than this one? So I'm gonna let this one go because I, I do think it's just a little bit too deep for me. 
So yes, declutter. And then going to hold onto this one because this one's like a perfect shade, tiny bit of warmth, a little bit of sheen, very easy product. It's more buildable. It's not like intense. I absolutely love this product. I feel like not a lot of people loved it, but I do. It's the Kosas, the Sun Show bronzer in Waves or Brave Waves bronzer in the Sun Show. This has like a little bit of sheen to it, but it's on the lighter side. This is a gorgeous product. I honestly should have talked about this in my favorite products of 2023. I absolutely love this. Hmm. It doesn't have the greatest smell though. Like, not gonna lie. Don't know what it smelled like when it started, but I'm gonna try and get some more use out of this one before I like declutter it because it just smelled like funny. Then I have one bronzer from Flower Beauty. It's the Heat Wave Luminous Bronze in the shade Sunrise Light is what I think it is. It's so hard to tell. They put these stickers on top of them sometimes. This is gorgeous. This is maybe leaning on a little bit too deep, but it is such a beautiful bronzer, like actually on the skin. I am definitely holding on to that. These are currently in my project pan as far as powder bronzers go. I've been working on this one, the Balm Desert. It's kind of a blush bronzer duo from the Balm. And I've used the Cuckoo Kaka out of this thing. And it's still like, I'm not making a dent. The reason that I love this one is because it has like this reddish tone to it. And I think that looks really flattering on my skin. So I'm holding on to it because it's not gone bad. And um, yeah, I want to try and pan it. Same with the Marc Jacobs, tiny, tiny little mini. I've made like a decent dent in it. I use this almost every day and I haven't panned it yet. I'm so annoyed. It's the Omega Bronzer in Tantastic. So holding on to it as well. I have one from Too Faced. They don't even make any more. It's the Milk Chocolate Soleil. Now they make something like this or it's just in different packaging, but it's not identical to this. This still smells like straight up hot chocolate. Is this a good shade for me? I think it is. Yeah, I wanna I wanna hold on to this one. I, I wanna get more use out of it. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. These two were in my reference library. Um, I've held on to them for like, you know, this one was fairly new. Uh, and this one for comparisons, this one is one of the mini in the old packaging of the Hula bronzers from Benefit. Um, also too deep. I think it's just time. I'm going to declutter that one. And this one from Juvia's Place, I don't love this shade and this is a little bit too light. So both of these shades don't necessarily work great on me. So I'm going to declutter this finally and it's going to come out of reference. One here from Glowish by Huda Beauty. Uh, I, I have barely even used this, honestly. This one's gonna go in a chopping block. I think it's a good shade, and I think it's more of a buildable formula, but is it one that I just love? I don't know. It's gonna go with Milani in a chopping block. One that I am going to declutter is the bronzer from ColourPop in Avila Beach. Not a bad bronzer, not a bad bronzer at all. This is loose, and I feel like it does totally pop out of me. This went into my worst of 2023. Not the bronzer per se, it was more the blush that I felt was a powderier formula. I like this one. I think this is a decent shade, but I have so many others in my collection that I prefer more than this one. So I already talked about it as much as I'm gonna talk about it this year and I'm gonna declutter it. This one from Tarte is a tiny little mini that I got in a set from, a beauty set from Macy's recently. And it is in the shade Park Avenue Princess and I'm testing it still. So I think it's a pretty decent shade so far. I'm gonna keep that one. Then I have one here from Wet n Wild. It's one of their color icon bronzers in Ticket to Brazil. This is just a bad shade for me. I usually like the color icon products, but this one is just a chalkier formula and the shade Wow, it's I swear it sounds like the packaging is just gonna snap. It, it the shade is just bad. It's a little bit too warm, so I'm gonna declutter this one. I have two from NARS. I want to say I have two from NARS. Yes, I do. I have the regular size and then a little mini, and I think these are both the same shade. So yes, Laguna and Laguna Matte, and this one is like a Laguna Shimmer, I guess. It has a little bit of shimmer to it unless that's like the normal Laguna. I just think these are too dark and I just, I don't reach for them because they're a little bit too deep for me. This one's better, but yeah, they're both just a little bit too deep for my skin tone. So I'm gonna declutter both of them. I have one of the Sephora Colorful Contours. Powder contour, decent contour, I guess. I just don't contour with powder. I don't know if that's, you know, something that a lot of people do, it's just not, something that I tend to do. I think I wanna hold on to this one for reference like I did the blushes, but I'm technically going to 
like, you know, declutter it from my collection. I have one that's fairly new, Revlon Skin Lights to me. This one is their Prismatic Bronzer in the shade Sunlit Glow 110. This is also a beautiful product, nice shade on me. It, you know, it's very similar to the Flower Beauty. It's very similar to the L'Oreal Lumi, but I just, I'm into bronzer. That's actually pretty similar to the Kosas. I'm kind of into like these more shimmery, sheeny, maybe even a little bit more neutral tone bronzers at the moment. So I'm gonna hold onto it. I have one of the mono blushes from Kaleidos that's more of a bronzer shade. Um, so that's why I put it in my bronzers. I just put this in a speed reviews. It's not a bad product per se. It's just, I'm making it work for me because it's a blush that looks like a bronzer. It's so soft and like creamy and beautiful. But yeah, chopping block this guy. I have one of the primer infused bronzers from Buxom. It's the Staycation Vibes in Rooftop Tan. Now this one made it in my last declutter. I wanna say this went into a chopping block and because of its sheen, it I kept it, but um, I think it's a little bit too warm leaning. Like once you actually pick it up, I never reach for it, declutter. I have one from Pat McGrath that is a pretty neutral shade. It is the Skin Fetish Divine Bronzer in Naked Desire. I am gonna hold on to that. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just, it's not my favorite. I have one of the bronzers from Make Beauty. This one, again, I've smelt recently. Oh, it stinks. Like, it smells like full-on crayons. I don't, I've never smelled a powder product that smelled like crayons. Like, lip products, yes. Cream products, yes. But this one, I don't know why, and plus it's too deep of a shade. So, this one is also removable. So I will be just like taking it out and throwing it away because I don't think it's good, but I'm gonna hold on to the compact, but this is a declutter. I think I may declutter this one from Jouer. It's one of those multi-use products and it did come out in 2023, but it's kind of too deep for me, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's like almost like gold, you know? Like it's so sheeny but it doesn't look good as a bronzer. It's called the Menage a Trois Butter Bronzer Blush and Highlighter in Cessoir. It's C-E-S-O-I-R. I have, have no idea how to pronounce that. I don't know what to do with this product. It's nice. It's too deep as a bronzer. I don't think I would sweep this all over to be a trio. I'm gonna chopping block this because I'm so on the fence about it. It's beautiful. Like it's a beautiful product, but like, can it be used for the eyes? Is it safe for the eyes? Would I even be bothered to use this for the eyes? I don't know, chopping block. I am gonna do my due diligence and all my chopping block stuff. I'm gonna be just like testing it like it's new makeup, seeing if it's gonna stay or go. Here's a product that I think is more like a contour. It's the Artist Sculpt and Precious Latte. It's like a bronzer, but it's a lighter shade than that for me no it's more like a bronze mm, I don't know it's kind of in between it's more like a bronzer I guess it's fairly new and it's actually quite an unoffensive neutral shade I think they did a really good job with this and the blush I didn't get the highlighter but I really enjoy these products so I'm gonna hold on to it and then I have one from Laura Geller I love this it's the baked bronze and brighten and fair this has a little bit of sheen to it but it's like a rosy tone so I just prefer like grabbing for something that is a little bit pink or peach and like a little bit more red leaning. I don't know, maybe this one doesn't look like that back in the viewfinder. It looks just a little bit more like neutral and sheeny, but I really enjoy this. If you swirl like just the right shades together, it does give this like pinky glow to the skin. I'm definitely holding on to this. The cover effects. Mm, the monochromatic bronzer duo matte and shimmer in sunkissed bronze. I have held onto this one through many, many declutters as well. I think it's mostly the shimmer. I don't know, I think this is too deep of a bronze shade for me. Yeah, it is. But then do I like this one? But I think I have other ones that are just like good like this that I should get more use out of. Ooh, I'm gonna declutter it. I did not think I was gonna do that, but I'm gonna declutter it. I have one of the Sun Lover Glow Bronzers from Catrice. Oh my gosh, I cannot remember this one either. I feel like this one has a sheen to it and is really nice and on the light side, yes it is. See, I don't need the cover effects that's too dark. If I want something sheeny, like I have so many blushes and blushes, bronzers that offer that, I'm gonna hold on to that one. And yeah, I don't feel bad about the cover effects one. Here is the other Tarte one that I said that I just couldn't get rid of. That is something I've traveled with many times. As you can see, it's like on the dirtier side. Um, I'm holding on to this one. This one has sentimental value to me. I took this with me several times that I traveled back to 
California, where I lived uh, when my dad was passing. Ooh, not sure I'm ever gonna be able to uh, let this go. Honestly, that might just uh, stick around for a while. Who didn't wanna go there. Okay, Physician's Formula Butter Donut Bronzer. I don't know about this one. I feel like this one needs to go in the chopping block too. I don't think this is necessarily like a bad shade. I think this needs to go on a chopping block. It has a little bit of sheen to it and it's nice. I just don't remember what it looks like on the cheeks. Gosh, Tom Ford. <laughs> I broke down and bought this because it just looked beautiful, but it like looks hard panned. It's like, I don't know, gritty kind of. It, it's just never been a really smooth formula. I think it looks nice on the cheeks, but because it's not like super smooth, I just don't find myself reaching for it, but it's Tom Ford, so I feel like I spent my money, I gotta hold on to it. Then I have one from Westman Atelier. I clearly don't reach for this enough because it's in its little freaking pouch. I feel like this is just too deep of a shade. It's the Beauty Butter Powder Bronzer in Coupe de Soleil. I wanna say this is just a little bit of a deeper shade. I don't even use it enough because now I remember this looks super intimidating like in the pan, but then when it gets to my cheeks, it's actually a really nice shade for me. I just now remembered that. So I'm gonna hold on to this. There's many things I really need to get more use out of. This is a product I am going to let go. It's the Sun Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfector in Light. You know, it has a purpose. Um, you know, I know it does. It's just not something I find myself reaching for. So I am going to, you know what? I'm actually gonna put this in reference. I think that Makeup by Mario is definitely like relevant and there are things from his line that I would like to hold on to in case. For now, I'm gonna put this into reference, but I am not going to keep it in my permanent collection because I just never reach for it. The Nabla Skin Bronzing Sun Kissed Effect Bronzing Powder in Ambra. I wanna say that I'm gonna hold on to this because I just love this baked formula. I just think it's really nice. I can only put so much in chopping block right now. Like I'm gonna have to rotate my chopping block and like get use out of things to know whether or not like I'm gonna keep them or not because I honestly end up reaching for like the same stuff just over and over. So for now, I'm gonna hold on to that one. This one from MAC went into my favorites for 2023. I don't think it's a revolutionary formula per se. It's the Skin Finish Matte Bronzer in Light Rosy. It's just a shade thing for me. I happen to really love like rosy toned or reddish toned bronzers because my skin is so fair. And orange just contrasts the blushes that I use. They don't seamlessly blend in, whereas I feel like more warm toned or rosy toned bronzers do. I just think that's more flattering. That's just what I've been liking lately. So I'm definitely holding on to this one. I have one that's fairly new. It's the LA Girl Buphoria Lustrous Bronzer. And I wanna say this isn't, no, it does come in a shade. It's Glow and Glamour. It's nice. It was nice, but it was two-toned for a collection. I just have too many. I have too many. I'm gonna let this one go. I have one from Sicily that is a single shade. I don't know what's up with that. It's the Fido Touch Sun Glow Bronzing Gel Powder. And yeah, when I picked this up, I want to say it was from like Neiman Marcus and it was in like a single shade. And I was like, wait, what do you mean? It only comes in one shade. I want to say though, that this is the kind of bronzer that I'm reaching for right now, which is just like super sheeny. So I'm going to hold on to it. I almost decluttered this one here from Guerlain last time. It's really nice lightish tone but it almost has like a bit of warmth. It's like a harder pressed formula. See how it's like warm, but super light. I almost decluttered this last time. It's getting like harder to pick up. It smells delightful though. It smells really, really good. I'm gonna hold on to it. I can't, the, I'll tell you, the more expensive stuff is just incredibly hard to let go unless it like absolutely sucks. There are two more here. I have the Infallible Bronzer in the shade Light, probably. Fair, actually, 200 fair. This is beautiful. I have also traveled with this, so I'm holding onto that. Love a soft matte neutral bronzer, super simple. One from Gucci, I just got this. I had 02 for the longest time, which was so dumb. So I picked up 01 at one of the sales, I wanna say. So this is not going anywhere. It's, again, fairly new. I am keeping 23 bronzers and I am going to declutter 15. I mean, that's not terrible. 
I'm getting rid of 15 of them and then two of them, I mean of this 15 is gonna go into reference. The rest of them I'm just going to get rid of. And then five of them are gonna go into the chopping block to see if they stay or go. So I think that's pretty good. Now we have to move on to the liquid and cream bronzers. Okay, all of my cream and liquid bronzers here. I know this is on the longer side, you guys. <laughs> this is like the biggest category between blushes and bronzers. I maybe should have broken them up. I don't know, but if you guys are enjoying this, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and I really hope you guys are enjoying. So this one is the Beautiful Skin Sun Kiss Glow Bronzer in the shade, I wanna say Fair from Charlotte. I have used this actually quite a bit. This one is a really good neutral like putty type bronzer. I think that it's just all around like super simple and easy to use. So I'm holding onto that one. This one actually became like one of my favorite products just because it's so light this almost like i put a big pretty big dent in it as far as like my products go i kind of did the, have this in my project pan not like officially but i was using it a ton it's the soft sculpt transforming skin enhancer in light i just think that this is again one of those super thin buildable really straightforward like easy to use products for beginners so i'm holding on to that one and then i have one of the chanel Healthy Glow Bronzing Creams. I wanna say this is like the reformulated one. Haven't reached for this in a while. Do I wanna keep this? And it is so silky soft and emollient. Um, again, it's kind of one of those like more expensive products. So I'm just really not ready to let it go just yet. I have one from Tarte. It's the Breezy Cream Bronzer in Seychelles. This one is really nice. It's a cream to powder. This one feels like it's getting dry. It's not that old. I don't know the shade though. Hmm. This looks pretty darn deep for what I'm reaching for. So chopping block that one. I honestly remember really enjoying that formula. I just don't know if that shade is gonna be for me. The Say Sun Melt Natural Cream Bronzer in Light Bronze. This one again, I feel like was on the warmer side. Actually, I don't think so. This looks more neutral. I'd like to get some more use out of this. So I'm gonna hold on to this one as well. I feel like the basket that I'm reaching to, my left, there's actually quite a few in here that I really like. I feel like more of the stuff that's gonna get decluttered was from that clear bin. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. The NARS Laguna Bronzing Cream in Laguna 01. I really enjoy this consistency and it's a pretty neutral shade, so. I do wanna hold on to this one. The Iconic London Precision Duo, and this one is in light shadow. So it has one powder, which came broken, but it's like a contour pot. They both feel creamy and they're like way more neutral than a lot of them. So I really enjoy this. And I've dug pretty hard into like the cream contour side of it. Well, I didn't get a very good swatch, but I've dug pretty hard into this. I was using it quite a bit. It's just a really buildable formula. Feels like it has a bunch of silicones in the cream side. So it's a slippier consistency, but it's also like really easy to use. So I'm holding on to that one. I really enjoyed the Tower 28. I want to say this went into my best of beauty. The Sculptino in Broad. I have used the heck out of this as far as like how much I use my products go. So I'm holding on to this one. This is fairly new to me. It's the Buriti Bronzer in, I don't know, the Buriti Bronzer only comes in one shade from RMS Beauty. This is really nice. The thing is like, see how like the edges here, I don't know if that's really evident. Some of these products tend to dry out on me. I like this one because it has a reddish tone to it and also it has a little bit of a sheen, but I don't understand why some of my products, like they get this, like layer to them. They just start looking like they're drying in certain areas. I don't like that. I've not even had this product more than three months. I'm gonna hold on to it because it still feels like it's okay, but it definitely feels like it's on the drier side. A couple of trios here, and I like all these trios for the bronzer, the bronzer especially. The one from Alioop, really nice bronzer, also comes with a cream highlighter and a cream blush. I really love this bronzer. It's just such a neutral shade. Same thing here. This one comes with a powder <laughs> blush, a powder highlight, and then a cream bronzer. And I just love the cream bronzer the most, and that's why I put these in the bronzer drawer. Same thing here. One of my favorite bronzers, and it's from Ulta. Really, really straightforward, nice and emollient formula. Dries down on the cheeks, almost this powder finish. This one and the alley-oop one, I kind of understand because 
They're all cream products. This is the Pop of Petals color story in the Cheek Squad from Ulta. The one from Kaja is in 01 in Butter Up from the Play Bento. And Ali Oop is the Stack the Odds in Sassy Pants. I actually really want to hold on to all of these. These are great for travel. I don't do that very often, but when I do, man, I just grab one of these and I go, just like the one I was showing you guys from Tarte. This one here from BH Cosmetics is the Summer Heat Cream Bronzer. I wanna say this one was too warm for me. Yeah, I just, I think this one is just too warm. Like I get the Summer Heat, I really love the formula, but this formula reminds me a lot of the one here it is from Makeup Revolution. They're very, very similar. And this one is a much more neutral tone. They're so similar in consistency. It's deep, but it's a neutral tone. And I, I just prefer this one. So I'm gonna declutter this and then hold on to the Makeup Revolution one. Here's my other Tower 28. This is the Bronzino in West Coast. I have to smell this one because it's like, you know, it's over a year old. I am gonna hold on to this one. I didn't love it when I first got it, but now I'm way more into a shimmery bronzer. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. This one's fairly new. This is from Mob Beauty. It's their clay cream bronzer. Again, super straightforward formula. This is an M80 is the shade. It's just a super easy product to use. So I'm a big fan of that. Going to hold on to it. I have a matte bronzer from ColourPop. Do I want to keep this of all the bronzers that I have in my collection? Is this one gonna be amazing? I don't know, I'm gonna chopping block this one. I'm on the fence. I wanna say it's time to get rid of this one. From Soul Body, the Face and Body Bronzing Balm in Fair. Just warmer than what I'm reaching for and this one is a little bit older in my collection. Oh my gosh, it still smells good. It's not dried out, but yeah, I just, I think it's a little bit warm for what I'm grabbing for. I just swatched that on a totally wet wrist, so it's not like laying perfectly. Chopping block, I can't, I can't. I need to at least wear these ones one last time before I decide it's not something I wanna keep. This is the first time I've ever done like a chopping block this big. I wanna have like a relevant feeling about it before I just let it go. This one is from W7. It's the Bronze Chic Universal Bronzing Balm in the shade, no shade whatsoever. And I don't know about this product. I wanna say this is too warm also. Yeah, way too warm. I like the formula, it's a cream to powder, but yeah, just too warm. I bought this for like a dupes video and really nice formula. Too bad it's a little bit too warm, um, but yeah, it's just a universal, so it doesn't have a shade. Anyway, I recommend a lot of W7 products. I think they're really good quality, but not all of the shades work for me, and especially in their bronzers, a lot of them just come in one shade, so I'm going to declutter that one. I'm also gonna let this one go from Jaclyn. This is older. It's like, you can already see it's like separated from the side. This is not a shade that I'm reaching for. This one just is too warm and too deep, but this is almost totally dried out. It's in the shade Sandy. I tried to get some decent use out of it. I think it was just a little bit too deep for me. So I'm gonna let that go. I have the Rose Ink Bronzer. I don't know, I, I've gone back and forth with this. I think that these Rose Ink products, aside from the blush, tend to dry out pretty quickly. This just is too warm for me. That's what it is in Parrot K. I think they've expanded the shade range or at least they have another shade that is not as warm as this. So if I end up talking about rose ink, I would pick up like a different shade or at least try to. But for now, this is gonna go into reference. I'm gonna technically declutter it because I'm just not gonna reach for something that warm. One that came in a boxy charm that I love is the Lower East Side Cream Bronzer in I wanna say this is Skyscraper is the shade. Really beautiful formula. It's a cream to powder, super easy. Like it's just simple. I literally keep swatching on my wet wrist and I'm getting the worst swatches. So super simple formula. It is a little bit deep, but I go in with a really light hand and honestly it looks really good. So I'm gonna hold, actually, you know what? I'm gonna put this in a chopping block. I wanna see, now that I'm swatching it, it definitely looks a little bit deeper than what I'm like reaching for currently. So let me test that one last time. I love the formula. I just, I don't know about the shade. Then one from Give Beauty. It's the Pick It Up Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo in Heaten Up. I like both of these. I think they're perfect for fair skin, fairly new to me. So I'm holding on to this one. One here from NYX, it's their Wonder Stick in the shade Universal Light. I really enjoy the contour side. It's a really neutral shade. Don't reach for it that often, but I definitely don't love the highlighter as much. 
but I'm still gonna hold on to it. This is gonna go into a chopping block. It's the liquid contour from Milani in 01 Honey. Wouldn't call this a contour, but I wanna see if I like it as bronzer. I just, I really haven't reached for it since I've done like a comparison video or whatever. So I am going to test this again before I decide whether I'm gonna let it go. This one I really do like from Catrice, the Shape and Define Contour Stick. This one is not a pointed tip like the NYX, which I actually kind of like the pointed tip. And this is more of like a concealer shade. It's not like, it's a highlight. It's just not like a highlighter, if that makes sense. And this is in, I don't even, oh, there it is, in the shade light or shades light. This one from Glossier is going to go into a chopping block. It's the Solar Paint in Flare. I don't mind this product. I actually don't think it's bad. I just don't know if I'm like reaching for it. And again, is the shade too warm for what I'm reaching for right now? Honestly, it's it's honestly not a bad product from Glossier, I think. I mean, I just like this formula. I just thought it was really easy to work with. But again, just might be something a little bit too warm for like what I am reaching for right now. So chopping block. One that I actually like from the Shape Tape line from Tarte, Tarte's releases for 2023 was the Sculpt Tape in the shade, I wanna say this is just, okay, soft bronze. I was gonna say light again, but no. This one I actually really like. Really good formula, beautiful bronze, not a contour, not sculpting with this. I'm totally bronzing with it and I'm gonna hold on to it. One that I actually think is really beautiful from Physicians Formula is their Butter Glow Liquid Bronzer. In this one actually only came in one shade, believe it or not, super not inclusive. That's how Physicians Formula is. They tend to fare on the light side. I think it's a beautiful product and they just had some recent releases that I did pick up for their 2024 launches, I guess. Um, would like to get more use out of this, but it's actually a really beautiful product. So holding on to that. Then I have my liquid contour wands from Flower Beauty. I think these were really good. Honestly, I put her highlighter in the worst of beauty for 2023. Just didn't think it was a really good formula, but I thought she did a way better job with the shade ranges in these liquid contours. Have these gone totally bad? This puff literally looks like it's gonna freaking explode. Okay, I don't like the state of this. I'm trying to squeeze some out and it's legit like coming out from every end. It's like not coming out from the top. I just, I don't love the way this light one is looking. Let me see the medium. I got the medium. See, I think this is in such better condition. Like I don't, I don't know what was going on with that light one. Like why it was coming out at the bottom. Okay, this one too. Like I can't even get the product to come out. So yeah, I'm these, I'm just going to let go. I really liked this one. As you can see, I've used quite a bit of it. I think that Flower Beauty did a way better job in creating like a contour shade for an actual light skin tone and way better than this. That is a bronzy shade. And I think honestly, a little bit better than Charlotte, which is way too deep for me in terms of contouring. So I liked this formula also, and I loved the shade range. I picked up all three shades because honestly, this shade is more similar or comparable to the fair to light or yeah, fair to light in Charlotte's wand. So, you know, this was just a better range in my opinion, but I wasn't gonna hold on to the deepest one. And since those two are not looking good, see how it's like exploding out all of the sides? I am just gonna check these. I mean, these had to have come out like in the early part of 2023, February? March, somewhere around there. I don't think these are super old, but as you can see, like I've used this, I just haven't touched them in a while. So maybe that's what it is, but I'm gonna let all three of these go. But speaking of the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand, this is in my current project pan. And um, yeah, it doesn't actually have that much left in it. It's like big, cause I haven't like started squeezing it just yet, but there isn't that much in there. Like this is, I've been using the heck out of this. So mine is just filled with a ton of air. Project Pan and keeping this one. Let's talk about some ones that were in my reference pile because I talked about this as the worst of 2023 products. It's the Baby Got Bronze from Essence. And I said it was the worst cause like, look at the shade. That's a full on contour and it smells like peaches, watermelon, I don't know, coconut. It smells like something and it's so strong. Like it's just filling up the room after I opened it. Terrible bronzing shade. I did talk about this, so I've held onto it for what it needed to be held onto for, so I'm gonna declutter this one. I also kept this, just for reference. It's the Luminous Putty Bronzer in, from e.l.f. 
Not that it's terrible, not that it's a bad shade, but it does look a little bit too radiant. It kind of makes my forehead look oily. So I just didn't love the effect of it on the forehead. I liked it on the cheeks, but it's more limiting than some of my other ones that are just easier formulas. So I'm gonna declutter that. And I held onto this one too, and I honestly should have talked about this. In my worst of releases of 2023, I'm definitely doing a better job next year. I'm gonna be paying more attention. This is a bronzer. It's the bronze, it's called the Velvet Bronzer Contour Stick. They're all called contour sticks, I'm pretty sure. This one is in Goddess. Yeah, it says contour stick, like a deep highlighter. I really should have talked about this in my worst of 2023. This is going by actually a really beautiful bronzy shade. This is supposed to be two-in-one bronzer, like the cushion bronzer and contour from Kiko Milano. I actually really enjoyed this. This was such a beautiful bronzy shade. I mean, like it is kind of in between bronzy and contour shade, see? Such an easy formula to work with. The component still works. I really enjoy this, so I'm gonna hold on to that. I have one of the contour sticks from Milk Makeup. The packaging is broken on me, so I just don't think I can hold on to this. This was in my best of beauty for 2023, and as much as I like this product, it just became, it's just getting too difficult to deal with. The bottom part broke off, so it won't turn up. I don't think broke off is the right word, but it detached from this. And so I was twisting it up with my fingers. Um, I'm just not down with that. For as much as like I have, you know, even though I loved this release, I thought this was a great neutral contour shade, which a lot of contours came out, just not all of them were great contour shades. I thought this one was really good. Even if I liked the product when it called itself contour, I just don't think they did a contour shade, whereas I think this one did, and it was called a contour, so I held onto it and I really enjoyed using it, but it's broken and I, I don't wanna mess around with it, so I'm gonna declutter this one. And I have one here from Well People. I was telling you guys, I'm just not a fan of this formula. It's, again, I think the super natural stick. This one came with like a hard piece in it. It came with like something embedded in it. I don't know what it was, I just, I'm not a fan of this formula. I'm not a fan of well people in general, so I'm gonna declutter that. This Tarte Man Eater Stick, it's the Silk Stick in Dusk. You know, this one leans a little warm and yellow. Am I gonna hold on to this because of the shade? I actually really do like the way that this formula feels and performs. Chopping block though, definitely chopping block. These two from Rare Beauty, I have one of the more recent releases in Bright Side, and then I have the older one in Power Boost. Is that correct? I'm pretty sure. So one of these I'm gonna get rid of because it's honestly just a little bit too warm and a little bit too yellow, but I'm gonna hold on to the more neutrally shade. Yeah, so it was Power Boost that's the older one. Bright Side is the newer one. I'm gonna hold on to Bright Side and I'm going to declutter Power Boost because again, just not really reaching for shades like this right now. I also should have put this in one of the worst releases for 2023. This might not be the smallest amount of product. It's even relatively similar or maybe even like more than the Milk Makeup one. But what is this? This is awful. This is, you can't store this. It's weird. I should have literally put this in the worst releases. And look at that shade. Oh, and by the way, my component came totally broken. I have to push it back down too. This is honestly one of the worst products that I spent my money on. I just, I didn't find enjoyment in the component. I didn't find enjoyment in the shade. Just. No, I'm gonna do such a better job putting items together that I just don't like or the worst of beauty for that year because I totally missed this one. It really should have gone in there. I'm just not a fan. So I'm going to declutter that one. The Merit Balm is really nice in clay. If I want something super neutral and light, I will reach for this. I'm gonna hold on to this. Then I have one from Winky Lux. I wanna swatch this because I think it's a little bit too warm and it's not a lovely formula. Like it's a little bit of a stiffer formula. Yeah, I just have so many other ones I would prefer to reach for than this one from Winky Lux. It's the bronzing stick in Golden Touch. I think it's like the Bronze Age bronzing stick is what it's called. I like Winky Lux. I think they're really cute, but um, I have so many more that I prefer more than that one, so I'm gonna declutter it. This one from M Cosmetics is the So Soft Sculpt Stick, I think, in Summer is the shade. Um, I wanna put this in a project pan, quite honestly. 
really beautiful. It might be a little bit too deep for me. Uh, don't care, formula is so great. I have one of the nudes, the color fix nudes. I was using this as kind of like a bronzer, but I'm gonna move this to my single shadow drawer. So I'm just gonna move that over there and get it out of the number for these bronzers. Then I have the Face Sculpt Liquid Contour from Moira Beauty in the shade 100 Fair Light. This is really pretty, like, and a actual contour shade. I really enjoy this, so I'm gonna hold on to it, but I also really enjoy this, the blush, which is in hollow there, hollow there. This is also like a liquid contour, little bit of a different formula, also a little bit of a lighter tone, but I actually like both of these. And I quite honestly don't have many liquid contours. I would say like, that's it as far as liquid contours go. And when I'm contouring, I actually do really like a liquid um, as opposed to maybe like, you know, like a stick. I just feel like these are easier to blend in and sometimes these I work a little bit harder with, I guess. They're kind of like the stiffer cream to powder formula. So I actually really do enjoy contouring with liquids. So I'm gonna hold on to those as well. Actually two really good softer formulas that are contour sticks. The one from Westman Atelier is the Face Trace Contour Stick in Biscuit. This one's really nice. It's a little bit creamier than both the Catrice and the NYX, which tend to be a little bit stiffer because they are much more of a cream to powder formula. So is this, it just has a little bit more emollients to it and it's fairly new to me. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. And the one from Victoria Beckham is called the Contour Stylus. And this one is in the shade Travertine. I'm pretty sure. Yes, it is Travertine. This is a really good contour stick for like a, your nose. It's perfect for that. I don't do that. <laughs> very often, but if I wanted to, this is the perfect product. Maybe even the one from NYX, as you can see, just so much thicker. I think this was specifically designed to contour the nose. So I think that's exactly what it's good for. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. And then finally, this one from e.l.f., the Halo Go Beauty Wand in the shade Fair to Light. I don't know what's going on, but it looks like it's like a little bit discolored in the tube. This one I know for sure is gonna go into a chopping block to see if it still performs. I keep, I don't know why I'm tugging. Um, if it performs well, if it's a shade that I really like, we'll see if I, you know, kind of enjoy it maybe over these two as far as like liquid contours kind of go. We're gonna chopping block it anyway. I have two bronzers from Phytosurgeons. I am so sorry to report. These are their Spectral Sunlight Cream Bronzers. I have shade one and two. So it was three different shade ranges, but each of them had a rosy counterpart. So shade two was rosy daybreak. Shade one was golden daybreak. So one was a little bit more warm and then one was on the rosy side. Beautiful concept. Beautiful, beautiful concept. These are freaking completely dried out and these launched in 2023. I don't know what the formula is, but it is done. It is dry. Maybe it's, I had them here. I mean, I keep all my makeup in the same place. It's upstairs in a room and a drawer. All of the blinds stay shut. The air conditioning pretty much runs all the time here around here in Florida and nothing. These are totally dried out on me. So I'm sad, but they did not perform I really do believe that the formulation needs to be redone on these since they were a brand new release, unless I just, I don't know, I stored them wrong. Do they need to be in like 50 degrees? Like, I, I don't know what it is, but these are no longer usable. So I'm gonna have to throw those away. This one is one that's in my project pan currently. I am using the heck out of this. This is the Oma by Sharon C Cream Bronzer. Oh my gosh, I love it. It is the Flawless IRL Bronzer in the shade Shady. Super easy, very similar, like honestly a dupe to the Tower 28 Sculptino. They're like identical. I mean, they're in similar packaging. I feel like Sharon really knew that. And I mean, they're like the exact same size even. Like dimension wise, they're literally identical. Very similar formula. I wanna say this is even more of a neutral shade than the um, one from Tower 28, but honestly, they're so similar. I just love this, 10 bucks, you guys. So, keeping, yes. And I wanna say the rest of the ones I'm about to pull out are like either chopping block or going to de be decluttered. I have the Huda Beauty Tantor. I have not reached for this in a while. It is still fully creamy, 
but this is like a deeper shade that I'm reaching for. But still, before I go and like totally declutter this, I wanna see, can I contour it with this? Is this something I wanna contour with? So I'm going to chop and block that. This one from Juvia's Place, kind of a newish release within the last six months anyway. It was shimmery and I wasn't expecting that. I really like this shade. It's just that I don't know if I love the shimmer. Like you can see how shimmery it is. Like I like it on the cheeks. I just don't know if I like it on the forehead. Um, like it's like gold sparkles in there. I'm not sure about this. I'm gonna chop and block this too. Then I have one here from Moira. It's the Stay Golden Cream Bronzer in 01 Light. I feel like this one is also just a little bit too warm. And yeah, I, I mean, I don't even need to like put this in a chopping block. I can already tell this is too warm for me. I think the formula is gorgeous and it does say Stay Golden, so I get it. But like it has way too much warmth in the undertone and it's just not a color that I'm reaching for. So I'm gonna declutter that one. I wanna say this one from Doll Beauty, same thing. It's the Gimme Sun Cream Bronzer in the shade Light. It's also just very warm inherently, like given its name, this is a much thinner formula, but it is, yeah, it's just, it's too warm. Again, just not something that I'm reaching for. So I'm gonna declutter that one. So I'm keeping 29. I feel like I made a decent dent. So keeping 29 and then I am going to get rid of 18. I'm going to declutter 18. I actually don't feel bad about that. Like 18 feels, feels good. Again, never really decluttered 18 products all in once when it wasn't like a lip product that I felt like I would never use or and or was expired. So I feel like I'm being fair to myself in getting rid of 18. And then there's actually quite a few in the chopping block. So let me count those. 11, 11 in the chopping block. And it seems like a lot, but I only need to test these sometimes once or twice to know whether or not they're gonna stay in my collection. So, um, I mean, I feel like, you know, it'll take me like two or three weeks to get through them. But after that, I'm gonna make a determination so I could end up decluttering a little bit more. That was the end of the decluttering, but let me show you guys what I've got so far in the total declutter pile and then the stuff that I have so far in the chopping block bundle of items and then I'll show you guys the drawers. We are in my closet now. This is the basket of stuff that I am going to declutter, not basket, box. It's not super deep, but this is everything so far of the declutters that I have completed. So it also includes like concealers and primers and setting sprays in here. And then my blushes and bronzers that we just did. So this doesn't even include highlighters. I'm gonna end up having to get another box here. Never decluttered this much. Like usually outside of filling like one basket, I have never <laughs> decluttered this many products. And this is everything that is still usable. I have thrown away the stuff that I feel like is dry or totally expired and have put everything else in here. Actually, I feel like these need to go in the trash. I did say that. So these ones, need to come out and go away. I just threw them in here way too quickly, but yes, these need to go. And like the Make Beauty products that I was showing you guys in that smelt, I took them out of their packaging and then threw away the actual product itself. So I'm gonna throw these away. Here is everything that I have for the declutter. So this basket also consists of concealers and primers and setting sprays, anything in here that was part of my original declutter. I can see a setting spray right here. And then my bronzers and blushes and that I need to test out to decide whether or not they're gonna stay or go. And then let me show you guys what the blushes now look like. This is my powder blush drawer and this was full, like all the way to the back and this whole side is like empty. So I feel like I did an amazing job at really getting rid of stuff that I'm not gonna use. Here is the creams and liquids. I actually still have room. I did not think that I would be able to get all of these in here and still have room in the back. And I feel pretty good about that. I'm really obsessed with cream and liquid blushes at the current moment, so it's not as cleared out as the powder one is, but I feel really good. I even had so many cream blushes in the store, I keep opening and closing it, that there were more in a drawer to my right, just in a bin loose because I couldn't fit them all in here. So now not only can I fit them all, but I still have a little bit of extra room. So I feel pretty good about that.
This is my powder bronzer drawer. This was again, completely full. It had a bronzer sitting in the back because I had taken up all the spaces. So now this has more than just an entire row empty. I feel really good about it. Now I do have some like in my project pan. So I've moved it over there into my everyday makeup drawer. So it is not in here. Um, and those are the only ones that are like really missing aside from the ones that are like in the current chopping block. And then this is my cream and contour and liquid rather um drawer this looks so empty this was super full and now there is a ton of extra spaces mind you there is a bunch still sitting up there to be tested so i could have more go back in the drawer compared to what it was just a little bit ago i feel really good about it because I do really like everything that's in here. So anyway, you guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching. I am out of here, you guys, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Bye.